Myers on a financial theater here in Phoenix, Arizona. The time for talk is over. It's time to knuckle up and throw down. Three five-minute rounds and a 160-pound catch weight. Introducing first, the fighter on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Team Henderson. He stands five foot 10 inches tall, weighing in at 159.4 pounds. His professional record, 15 wins and six defeats. Fighting at a fight ready, by way of home one, Illinois, Bobby the Wolfman Muffin. And now his opponent, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, representing Team Bader. He stands six foot tall, weighing in at 162.5 pounds. His professional record, five wins and four defeats. Fighting out of Baker's MMA and Blue Star Grappling. Surprise, Arizona, I give you Austin Star Killer. Referee, Chris Flores. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the trucks with this wrestling. That's the tail of the tape. This is our main event of the evening. So much bad blood between these two. Cage door closes. Finally, we have this bout upon us. Bobby the Wolfman Moffat, blue corner, black and white shorts, taking on Austin the Starkiller Verms. Red hair, red corner, coming out, throwing fast and hard, Frank. Oh, nice little body shot, too, as he came forward. Yeah, really letting go early. Not intimidated by this challenge, wants to rise to it, Frank, and that's key. You can't get broken before you even step in the cage, right? A lot of people though, can take the pressure that they put, even on themselves with the interviews and things they say, they go, man, I gotta back that up. And it can be very difficult and it can be crushing. Here he's come out there, just let loose right off the bat. He has the longer reach and he's taking advantage of it. Yeah, he's firing those shots. He's mixing them up as well. Like you said, the, the shots to the body, you're getting little smiles from uh, Bobby Moffitt though. He's got so much experience. 15 and six record, has fought around the world. Oh, oh, oh. the job kind of rocked him. Now looking on the on the back, Austin Worms in his crucifix position. But Bobby Moffat, he has been a black belt since 2016. He said, look, I know his record, I know the weapons he's got and how he finishes people. He said, I'm no joke on the ground myself, Frank. I guess he's recovered from that shot that Jake Bobby did that made him shoot. Because even though he had a top position, well, he's taking a shot again. Oh, looking for the oh. guillotine here. Hasn't quite got that purchase though, Frank. No, and he's blocking the pass because Bobby's making it past the legs, which would nullify the guillotine. Burns has identified that and he's driving his knee in and avoiding. And Bobby Muffet loves to work from this top position, Frank. Such a pressure fighter from Jay here. Yard pushing through. He's gonna have a knee bar of himself. Bobby's trying to keep that leg from going between his legs. Oh, steps out nicely, composed, little escape there, Frank. He's got another Kimura oh. grip again. And he's very good, and he has wins by transitioning from this Kimura grip. He'll swing his legs completely to the other side where his head is and lock up. Oh, he's gonna be in an arm bar attempt himself here. That's the risk, right? That grip, you can reverse it. Bobby's keeping the arm straight, he's got the Kimura out. His arm is straight though, and Bobby was able to break the grip by stepping over with his knee. Excellent technical groundwork here from both these fights. Oh, looking to set this up, looking for the Dars. Yeah, that was three-quarter, he's driving the Dars down. But with the elbow down, see how his hand's on the hip now there? It'd be almost impossible for him to grab the grip now. He has to get that arm out of the way, Bobby does, if he wants to be able to commit with the Dars. Still using this. This is a good pressure spot, though, right? You oh, can... a ton of pressure on there. It's not comfortable. It just... It, oh, he passed his arm down. This could get tight. He's, He's going to grab on the leg. Bit by bit, working out. Bobby Moffitt looking for the finish here. Oh! Turning oh, his man over. Tight. What's the key here, Frank? Oh, you can see there now the he grimace. He's belly down. Go the other direction, so he's got to keep his legs away from him. Oh, is that a tap? 
That's a tap. No, it's oh, not. No. no, it's not. No. That wasn't a tap. He was pushing on the hip. Moffitt, Moffitt taking that victory. That wasn't a tap. That's up. So we're going to have a little look back here. Let's jump through. Look, look Frank, talk Let me, me watch through this. It. Maybe live, I'll think differently. He's posting on the hip. Uh, he's backing his legs away. That's a single. A single. A single's not now a look, tap. Look, his fingers out. A single is not a tap, right? No. A tap is tapping. One slap. I mean, then... But listen, Bobby Moffitt could do nothing about that. No, he reacted so well to the grappling, the attacks, even the striking of Verms. And he got that victory and he was setting up. He did have Verms in some trouble. He had some work to do to really cinch that up. But my goodness, you can see how disappointed Verms is in that moment. Yeah, I would be too, I understand. So that, that takes... That's a whitewash. The Henderson crew have cleaned the mats, and they ha we have a new Freedom Fight Night champ in Benson Henderson. Huh? A crazy night of fights, of talents. And the launch now, the launch of the United Fight League. That will be upon us. That's another contract as well. Bobby Moffitt earning that through that performance, that victory. Now we need to bring the fighters in and make this one official. So to do that, one last time, let's hand it to Cyrus Fees. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chris Flores stops the fight at three minutes and 12 seconds of round number one. You win by tap out due to Darsh Cho.